Hi guys. It is getting to be a spectacularly gorgeous day. And I do mean soon to be over the top beautiful 80 degree day here. I am back in the oasis of freedom. Uh, and I have finally, these are the sandhill cranes in the background. I am at Crazy Crane Campground, what is left of it here on uh, where I finally have gotten back to global industrial civilization and have internet unbelievably it is Friday November we're gonna call it 19th 2021 and uh so not sure what I'm gonna be doing for the next five or six months trying to sell crazy crane campground so uh, come down here and see me and Hang out. Uh, I would love to uh, have some visitors from the Doomosphere. But anyway, since it is Friday, before the little dog and I get back to work, clearing out the Amazon rainforest that has uh, taken over, good lord, crazy crane campground in the last six months, uh, we're going to do what we do every Friday. And that is our ecological meltdown roundup rant where I go over to mongabay.com to see what Rhett Butler and the boys and girls have been up to have on their minds while I have been heading from New York to the oasis of freedom in the Sunshine State. But i got to put this little dog down because there's probably some squirrelies. Probably squirrelies. There are no chippies in Florida. I don't know why they're, they don't have chipmunks in Florida. No shortage of swirlies, however. So anyway, speaking of the Amazon rainforest that I have been logging <clears throat> here in the Oasis of Freedom, uh, what have been going on this... Let's go down to Brazil if I can get my... Uh, if I can get my old man glasses. <clears throat> So what happened in Brazil last month? <clears throat> the Amazon rainforest has the highest October forest loss since at least 2007. On Friday, Brazil, and you understand this is the Brazilian government's own estimates, not the non-government. This, this is by Brazil's own admission. Uh, <clears throat> reported the highest level of deforestation for any October dating back to 2007. Uh, according to government data, 877 square kilometers, otherwise known as 339 square miles of rainforest were destroyed in the Brazilian Amazon last month a 5% increase over October of last year, of October 2020. <clears throat> this marks the second straight month where the rate of forest clearing has risen. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, what a surprise. <coughs> okay, uh... <clears throat> Let's hear how the big bad wolf and the lions and tigers and bears are dealing with humans. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Carnivores avoid rush hour by taking roads at night. Large carnivores avoid people by steering clear of roads during the day, but they often travel by road at night. Avoiding humans, avoiding humans is a higher priority than avoiding other carnivore species. Humans may also be altering predator-prey relationships by making large carnivores more nocturnal. Yep, yep, yep. Alright, so... You know, Manga Bay has their own YouTube channel, and uh, this week they're heading over 
to uh, Southeast Asia to answer the question, what is going on in the greater Mekong region? <coughs> Damn! I don't know what I'm allergic to down here in the Point Lonesome Swamp. Uh, so what is going on in the great, the greater Mekong region is the same thing going on on the rest of the planet. The greater Mekong River region is under direct assault on every level by humans. Uh, the river is drying up. Uh, the, uh, of course, the, in whatever forest is left is being cut down. Uh, every one of our fellow earthlings is going in the stew pot. Humans are breeding like flies. Uh, anyway, uh, what is going on in the greater Mekong region? Probably a lot, looks a lot like what's going on within about 30 feet of this camera is my guess. So from Vietnam to Sumatra, <coughs> in Sumatra a snare trap cost a baby elephant her trunk, then her life. A female elephant calf in Indonesia has died days after her rescue in an emergency amputation of her trunk. Authorities link the elephant's death to the severe wounds believed to have been inflicted by a snare trap set by wildlife poachers. Snare traps, <coughs> typically made of steel or nylon wire and usually set for bush meat like wild boar, are in fact indiscriminate in what they catch, resulting in the capture of non-target species as well as females and juvenile animals. And you can take that story and pretty much uh, send it all over the world. Again, my guess is there's probably some damn alligator snare trap uh, within 500 feet of me. Okay, as long as we're over there in Asia, uh, let's go over there to Indonesia. Wow. Indonesia slashes its 2021 mangrove restoration target, vows to make it up in 2022. You know, if I had those two buttons, I you know, I love these headlines where you can hit the no shit Sherlock button and the bullshit detected button. No shit Sherlock Indonesia uh, has completely failed to protect mangroves this year. Bullshit detected that they're going to do any better next year. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, they're blaming technical hurdles including diversion of mangrove restoration funding for the corona panic response. Yep, yep, yep. The country is home to more than a quarter of the world's mangroves. Uh, Indonesia, like everywhere else on the planet, including right here in Florida, has lost much of its mangroves to logging and shrimp farms. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> if you have any idea what a GIF is, a GIF, do you think that GIF of the smoking chimp is funny? The chimp was not laughing. Yes. Anyway, while a GIF uh, of an ape engaging in human behavior may seem cute, the animals used to create such images are often subjected to abuse. Do you think so? Yes. 
here is a new um, anyway kind of complicated about rivers in the Amazon basin uh, anyway uh, what's going on with pangolins kind of reminds me of the gun control debate superstitious belief kills pangolins no people kill pangolins beliefs don't kill pangolins superstitious beliefs that eating pangolin meat or grinding up their scales or whatever they do has some sort of medicinal uh, properties I don't know it's probably some sort of aphrodisiac or whatever uh, superstitious BS beliefs lead people to kill pangolins okay beliefs don't kill pangolins bullets don't kill pangolins people kill pangolins Anyway, I, I love this little bit of hopium here. For Kenyan farmers, organic fertilizer brings the land back to life. Yes. Gee, guess what they're using uh, to save the planet in Kenya? How about organic fertilizer? I love the crazy cranes. We seem to have a lot more sandhill cranes this year than we did last year since there's no longer this crazy pit bull running around. The, uh, the sandhill cranes are landing right on my dock. Alright, what is the latest species you can goodbye, kiss goodbye? How about Malawi's spotted ground thrush? You can kiss goodbye. Okay, all right. This is uh, this is England. I don't know. Is this the Queen or Boris Johnson saving the planet? You know, all of this about is it giving thirty percent or fifty percent of the planet back to every earth thing we share the planet with so now this is the new definition of ambitious this is uh, how to how to define the word ambitious in the year 2021 ambitious English rewilding project aims to give 20 percent of land back to nature okay so humans get 80 percent Every other species of earthling people in England share England with get 20%. 80% to one species. 20% for every other species in the country. That sounds pretty ambitious to me. Rewilding projects are multiplying in the UK in response to a growing awareness of the country's serious loss of biodiversity. Britain ranked 189th out of 218 countries in the State of Nature report for the quality of its biodiversity and natural condition. Yes. Uh, anyway, yes, I love the new definition of ambitious. Wow, you will not believe this. <clears throat> We're going to go to Guatemala for this uh, earth-shaking headline, which you can pretty much find anywhere on the planet. Indigenous mine opponents targeted in raids during state of siege in Guatemala. Yes. <clears throat> I've actually been, uh, I've been to this town in Guatemala where I was uh, mistaken for a miner and I have to admit uh, 
I was not warmly received. I was actually attacked by two geese, uh, viciously attacked by two geese in this indigenous community. In the midst of a long conflict and recent protest over a nickel mine in El Estor, Guatemala, police have carried, the, the Guatemalan police have carried out more than 40 raids and 60 arrests, not of the Canadian miners, of the people fighting uh, in the mine. And this has been going on, I was down there in the year 2009. Uh, no, 2006, uh, 15 years ago, this was going on where the cops are, you know, that I mean, it's a slam dunk. Who do you think the Guatemalan police, whose interests are they serving? The Guatemalan indigenous people, the, you know, the Mayan Indians or the Canadian nickel miners? Who do you think the Guatemalan police in a, so now a 30 day state of emergency has been declared. Indigenous Mayan opponents to the mine say they were never properly consulted about the mine and its impacts on their lands, livelihoods, and lake. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, anyway. Uh, I think we get that one. Wow, so what is going on with Antarctic conservation? Countries fail to agree on Antarctic conservation measure, measures for the fifth straight year. Members of the multilateral body responsible for Antarctic marine conservation failed to agree on new measures to protect the Southern Ocean from overfishing. One more time, as they've done for the previous four years, China and Russia blocked all proposals to establish any new marine protected areas. Yeah. I've read this next story before that, uh, you know, looking at honeybees, guess where the honeybees are doing okay? Uh, you don't go out in the country looking for honeybees. I never saw a, I, I did not see a honeybee the entire summer at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Where the the honeybees are actually doing better in cities uh, than out in the country, but you know because there's less pesticides and all that other crap. So, uh, if you want to get some honey, go to the city. All right. Then, uh, <clears throat> so you know these stories were being written before the end of COP26. So they have several stories here about the absolute failure of, uh, of COP26. Uh, you, you know, uh, just story after story. I, I don't need to. I, I, I'm going to come back, and I think on Sunday, I was going to do it last Sunday, but I was traveling uh, for my doomsday sermon. I found what I think is the best summation of the abject failure of COP26 to do one damn thing to save this planet. But we'll have that on Sunday. Let's see, is there anything I want to hear? Uh, what is going on <clears throat> with the United States? The United States, while it has made a major sea change since the denialism of the Trump administration, continues to be cautious 
continues to be cautious, I love that uh, <clears throat> euphemism, about any language that would threaten oil, gas, and coal industry subsidies or antagonize Republican members of Congress or coal company baron and West Virginia Democratic Senator Joe Manchin. Of course, you, you know, this Joe is a bigger threat than the Republicans. Uh, here is African women leaders uh, failing, completely failing to make the point climate change means hunger in our communities. I might, I, I might uh, suggest to those African women that breeding, that breeding, <clears throat> yes, uh, means hunger in their communities. Okay, a, a, a child that is never born cannot go hungry. But uh, <clears throat> blame it on climate change. Nothing to do. But anyway, uh, yeah, here, here, here we go. Uh, <laughs> how about this for some hopium? Indigenous groups call for government intervention as land grabbers invade Bolivian protected areas. Yes, uh, this is this huge uh, protected area. It was just created uh, nine months ago created to protect almost one million hectares or two and a half million acres of primary forest uh, out there in Bolivia. But despite its new protected status, residents are already reporting invasions and human settlements in the park claiming the colonizers were land traffickers. Uh, there you go. Uh, local leaders are calling for government intervention while also alleging connections between land grabbers and government officials. Yes, this is like, uh, you know, the chickens. Uh, <laughs> the chickens appealing to the foxes uh, to, you know, to stop the weasels. Oh, Jesus. This, this, this just goes on and on and on. Uh, yeah, here we go. I love it. You know, the unintentional, uh, sick, twisted humor in Manga Bay every we trying to find some hopium. New study helps cattle ranchers monitor their, ecolo their ecological impact on U.S. rangelands. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Okay. Let's look at the plastic scourge of the corona panic. This is anybody uh, listening to this still clinging to any notion that the corona panic was a good thing for this plant, planet. And according to this study, it is hospital waste even more than these disposable masks. Uh, hospital waste, mask, all this crap. The plastic scourge of the pandemic. A new study has found that 26,000 metric tons of pandemic-related plastic waste has been dumped into the world's oceans since the start of the corona panic. The largest share of pandemic-related plastic waste is actually generated by hospitals 
while smaller amounts, you know, just from all the rest of the, the, uh, the sheeple, from the improper disposal of face masks, corona panic, testing kits, and packaging from online shopping activity. Besides posing a threat to marine life and humans, mismanaged plastic waste may have the potential to alter Earth's life support systems, its dynamics, and stability. Yes, plastic is one of many human-made materials included in the novel entities planetary boundary, which is one of the nine thresholds beyond which life on Earth could become untenable. Thank you, Corona Panic, for making life on Earth untenable. All right, yeah, here, once again, here, here, here is some, uh, you, <laughs> Once again, some uh, some hopium here. Uh, going to Sub-Saharan Africa, the coast of Ivory braces braces to save what is left of its single-digit forest cover. The coast of Ivory government says it will work to protect its remaining forest following an invent a nationwide inventory that shows the country's forest cover has declined to less than 9%, otherwise meaning that more than 91%, more than 91% of the coast of ivory's trees have been bulldozed. Uh, good Lord. The remaining forest, like the 91% that have already uh, disappeared off the face of the planet, are under pressure from expanding agriculture, including extensive cocoa and cashew plantations. There you go. I love this headline. You you can move an elephant to the jungle, but it won't stay there. Here is I, I'm just gonna good glory guys. I could go on and on. I have to get back to uh, deforesting my own Amazon rainforest here in the uh, here in the Sunshine State. Here is some article about some big ass mine expansion in South Africa. Uh, gee, here come more crazy cranes coming in for a landing. Forest declarations are nice, but profitability determines land use in the Amazon rainforest, yeah. Do you think so? Uh, here's another article about COP26 being a uh, joke. Here's some article about tigers in Nepal. I anyway, guys, I could go on and on with this, but uh, I understand I am talking to myself. I'm going to take a swig of my plastic Walmart water that Lulu was kind enough to leave me. You have not been very busy getting squirrelies, and me and the little dog are going to head back to work. Uh, this is the the ongoing the ongoing. Uh, deforestation in the uh, in paradise this is crazy crane campground or what's left of it you know since we were shut down by the county but uh, 
Come see me. I got my little trailer. I got power back in the kitchen. Uh, I got pretty much everything except a flush toilet. I'm back to the five gallon bucket. But it is gorgeous. Out here in paradise. Get out there and enjoy paradise while you still can. Bye guys.